You have a 26-year-old male who is ri riding a motorcycle down Highway 25, traveling at about 80 miles per hour, lost control, laid the bike down, tried to separate himself from the bike, but before he could effectively do so, him and the bike smashed into a tree. He saw it coming. He braced himself for the impact. Upon bracing himself for the impact, what did he do? He took a deep breath against a closed glottis. So when he smacked against that tree, what happened? He popped a hole inside of that lung. So go ahead and start breathing for that patient. How is your patient breathing now that he's got a popped lung? Rapid, and he's breathing shallow. So notice what's happening to the physiology of this patient as you're breathing rapid and shallow. What's happening? The bag is inflating more, so you're increasing, listen up, you're increasing thoracic pressure. That air is leaking out of the lung and filling up the thoracic cavity. So what's happening as that one lung uh, deflates? It's putting pressure on the mediastinum. It's putting pressure on the other lung. It's putting pressure on the trachea, causing tracheal deviation. It's putting pressure in the thoracic cavity, which is causing jugular venous distension because that air is getting locked up. So your patient is breathing rapidly, right? Cow fire has them in C spine, only your patient doesn't want to lay flat. Why not? Because they're having a hard time breathing. You show up and your patient is looking pale and diaphoretic. What's causing the pale and diaphoretic skins? Poor perfusion. Poor perfusion. You reach down and feel for a pulse. It's weak and thready. Why is that pulse weak and thready? Because the heart can't pump due to the increase in thoracic pressure. If that radial pulse disappears on you, what does that tell you? Yeah, and now, not to mention, your patient is becoming hypoxic as noted by decreased SpO2 sats and cyanosis around the lips. So you get a blood pressure, and what's that blood pressure likely to be? Is it? Why is it low? You've got so much pressure inside that it's impeding cardiac output. If you impede cardiac output, what else do you impede? Venous return. If you impede venous return, your cardiac output is going to be decreased. So you you know that he's got difficulty breathing. You grab a set of lung sounds. Aha, what do you have? Diminished. Diminished, Diminished or absent on the affected side that you plug the hole in. So is this patient, is this injury causing respiratory compromise? Yes. Is this injury causing hemodynamic compromise? Yes. Yes. You show up on scene and what are you going to do? You're going to decompress the chest. So go ahead and take your scalpel, cut a hole inside the bag. And you can allow some of that air to evacuate the bag. Allow some of that air to evacuate the bag. Come on, do like you mean it. And now as you deflate that bag and then you start breathing for them, what are you noticing about the bag and the lungs inside the thoracic cavity? The lungs can now expand again. And we know we properly decompress them. How? We've got lung sounds. We know we're successful with this procedure. How? They can breathe a little bit better. Their color starts coming back. Their mental status starts improving. Their end tidal capnography, their pulse ox starts improving. Right? We're able to reassess this for positive improvement. You can even see how the lungs are going to work almost in concert with the thoracic cavity. We have that viscous fluid that's holding the lung up against the thoracic cavity. Whenever air or blood or air and blood gets in there, starts peeling that lung away from the thoracic cavity, we've got issues.